Of course. All right. We are live from the vault of the Andrew Johnson Bank Studios. Welcome to the Good Morning Show, finally. Better late than never? Yes. Does that apply today? Well, yes. Absolutely. Okay. I'll take it. So, uh, sorry for the delay, folks. We had some uh, audio issues, so uh, I think that we have those resolved for the for the moment. So um, let's get let's get into the show. We're gonna sure. try to cu- play a little bit of catch up here. We got a lot of stuff going on. We got uh, Susan Hyder in the studio now. We also have Tony Miles coming in shortly. So uh, Susan, let's start off with uh, with some stuff that you have today. Can you kind of give us a preview of what you have? Well, in front of I you? have how to mark on stuff. <laughs> how to mark on stuff. Tell me more about that. Uh, well, every, you know, you see how much. All these things are here, and um, there's different ways to mark stuff for different purposes. Okay. And you've got fabric and other things that you use with sewing, and there's ways to mark. So. Okay. And a situation, uh, give me a, an uh, example of something, uh, a time that you would need to make a mark on your fabric. Well, either when you're making a pattern, you're making a template, or mark on fabric is when you're making darts with the on, when you're making dresses or whatever, mm-hmm. or on your quilt on your squares, or put a dot there to um, have a certain place that will match. Okay. Um, marking you- on your fabric where to cut it if you want to cut out with scissors, and and we'll do that another time. We'll have template training um, sometime, and we'll we'll see how to use these in the future. Okay. But there's ways to lots and lots of ways to mark. Okay, and uh, you brought some, uh, you got some squares of fabric there with you. Do you want to uh, show us the different types of uh, devices that you can use to mark? I'm going to mark all over this fabric. All right, sh- <laughs> let, let's, let's get started. Okay, the, the, the first one is our plain old pencil. And, of course, we have the mechanical pencil. And these, are, these will war- mark on your fabric, and they will make a line. If you're needing a really exact line, the mechanical pencil will work great. Um, the only thing about pencil is it will not come out of your fabric easy. So if you're marking something, you can use it maybe if you're going to mark something that is, um, you're going to cut the, on the line and it's not going to show on your quilt. Um, if you use ink pen, you certainly can use it. The problem with ink pen is if you wash stuff, sometimes the ink pen will run. So if you're going to mark squares and cut them out, use the pencils rather than the ink pen. Because the ink pen, some some of them won't run, but some of them will. Like the first time you wash your quilt and if you had it all around where you cut the squares out, it may, you may have a problem. This is an interesting thing. What does that look like? It's like a bar of soap. Bar of soap. If you have dark fabrics, and there we go. It's a kind of a, li- a wide line, but if you have something that you're just wanting to mark and you want it to wash out later, and you can sharpen, take a little knife and sharpen this. And uh, so we all have these left. Okay. After we get them too small, you can't use them in the shower no more. Just put them in your sewing room. Interesting. Okay. okay. Then we have chalks, all kinds of chalks, and these are all chalks right here. I'm going to move these out of the way now that we've talked about them. I'll just throw them away here. These are chalks. And probably all of you have seen these either in blue or white. And this is the little holder that they come with, and it's just called Taylor's Chalk. Most grandmas have these in their sewing kit. Um, And it's thin edge. And this holder has a sharpener on it. And you just rake it through, make the thin edge. Interesting. And then I'll put the blue on here because you can see the blue on the black and the blue on the white. Okay. And that's a chalk. Nice. And that just, I'm not going to spend a whole long time, but it, you use a brush or you brush it off with another piece of fabric. That's chalk. This is chalk, and this is a nifty little thing. It's got a little wheel down here on the end. Okay. So it goes like that, and it just rolls. Oh, okay. And they come with refills. So this is a, this is a yellow. These come in yellow, blue, and pink. Okay. I just brought a pink refill to show you what it is. You just open the top up. And just dump it in? Dump it in. Nice. And you're good to go. Okay. What I like... 
they come in, oh, in white, excuse me, the chalk comes in white. Most of the time, the yellow or the pink, the yellow, see how the yellow doesn't show up very well on the, on the white? On, so yeah, you would use white. pink or blue on a, a real light ones. Okay. But then see the yellow shows up really well on the darks. Okay, cool. Um, plain old chalk, the, um, you can use plain old chalk. It does or does not rub out real good. Um, the only thing about it is it's hard to get a thin line. I see. Um, the caveat on all of these is test them with your fabric first. Make sure it'll come out like you want it to. Gotcha. So it I would hate for you to um, mark all, you know, on the top of your quilt mm -hmm. and your, um, have all the lines and then sew on it and then the chalk won't come out. I had somebody that had blue chalk and they quilted their whole quilt but didn't check some of their fabrics and the blue wouldn't come out very easily. That's not good. Yeah. This is a chalk one, and this is the refill for it. It's the same kind of thing as the, the roller that we just saw, but it's got a little bit smaller tip, and the refills just roll. There are, you just screw them off and screw, screw the new one on. That's convenient. I you, yeah, I think you can see that, mm -hmm. where it shows you how to do that. Um, and it's a pin style. Okay. This is just a plain old... Taylor's chalk, same thing as this little one here that Grandma has. Okay. But it's... That's in a pencil form. Pencil form. I see. And these are some refills. There's a pencil form Taylor chalk like this. And these are just some refills that... Um, for the pencil chalk. And okay. that shows you how little they are. Wow. Okay. Yeah. See, they're little. Interesting. So those are all the chalk ones that you brush out. Um, and these are some Taylor's um, cloth markers. This I think will show a better on them. This just, well, there we go. Yeah, you can definitely see that. And then it's supposed to wa wipe out real good, but I would test these two. They say, you know, they're dressmaker pencils. Those are the ones that come in those kits that you get mm -hmm. um, that have the pencil in it and it says dressmaker pencil or whatever. Be careful with those because they don't come out as easy as the chalk pencils. And what type of fabric do you have that you're This is right a now? cotton blend with a poly and this is a um, poly cotton blend. I just I brought something so white and, and black okay. so we could see on it. Gotcha. And these are washout markers. I don't know if you can see the end or not, but mm -hmm. they're the blue and white. I'll just do like this. Draw them both at the same time. Okay. Um, they wash out. So if you're gonna ha if you have something you're gonna wash, they'll wash out, and they come in blue and white, and I believe they still come in pink. Um, some of the the companies have been changing their availability on some stuff recently. I see. So it's kind of hard to get some of the stuff again. But you still currently have those at Hyder Hangout. Right. Okay. Right. Cool. Um, and what else do we have? This is a Fonz and Porter. That looks like a paintbrush. Well, it's got, these are refills actually. All right. So it's just a pin here. Oh, I see. It was just a case. And these I'm are sorry. refills and they are the whites, they call them white ceramics. Okay. Um, they're a little bit harder. Um, they, they have, and they talk to you on the back, and all of them say on there, please check your fabrics first. Sure. Um, and turn that to the, uh, the close-up camera real quick just so we can see. It. There we go. Okay. It's got a little bit of shine. There we go. Nice. So it's just like a regular pan and then lead refills, and these are ceramic, so that's their, they're white, and they're ceramic-type pencil. Okay. And um, they, they don't come out as well as some of the others. Um I'm trying to say if this particular pin, because they come in, they come in the regular pencil lead and then the ceramic, and I believe this pencil can use both refills, so you can change between the two. Okay. Okay, here is a handy dandy little thing. Can you see this mark here, the little purple one right here? Yes. Okay, I did that when we first came in. I don't know if it's faded any. But that says disappearing ink pen. So it comes in purple ink. Mm -hmm. 
and I tell everybody, don't mark your whole quilt. Just mark what you're going to sew in the next few hours. Or, and see, it has it, it's faded a little bit, but not too much so far. So yeah. that's that's the line, and it's air erase. So what happens is because of the moisture in the air, this pen will disappear. The, the ink will disappear. So I've had somebody mark, you know, a whole bunch of squares to do their quilt. You know, where you go and you mark the, the squigglies. Can't see it on the black very easily, but you mark your little quilt patterns. I move that up a little bit. There you go. Um, and I didn't press very well, but it went fast. But if they marked that over a whole big area and left for 24 to 48 hours, it probably will be disappeared. This definitely disappears within 72 hours. It just depends on how, how much moisture there is in the air and where you're at. Okay. So it, it disappears at different rates, but it disappears into the air. So you can mark it, and then it'll go away. You won't have to do anything for it. All right. And what we got the uh, last this couple ones here? This is Washable Wonder Marker. And it's washable a, Wonder Marker. Yeah. So it's washable, and it's, well, it's blue. It almost looks like the chalk one, but it's pretty oh, yeah. bright. And here again, if you have a piece of fabric that you're not sure that it's going to wash out, take a little scrap you have left, draw on it, and then put it in the water and make sure it comes out. Because some fabrics will grab onto inks better than other fabrics. This one does not, walk out, mark, does not wash out. This is one that you would want to write names. Okay, so this is more of a permanent um, solution. You know, or draw a little flower on your thing. Okay. Um, it's fabric markers, comes in a whole bunch of different colors, and we'll just do a little, and see here you got, this one's bright pink, and it probably will show good on the black too, but it will not come out. That is a very nice flower. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> Very quick. Um, and it's perfect for all fabrics. Um, are permanent and washable. So once they dry, and especially once they're dry and you iron them, they won't come out. Ever? They're, permanent, yeah, permanent. Per permanent, permanent. All right. Um, you can use Sharpie markers on fabric, but it tends to bleed. There's Pintel markers that don't bleed and Pentel are, are permanent. Those are ones that you would use if you are making a quilt for um, a wedding. Mm -hmm. Don't use a Sharpie marker because it tends to bleed. You get the Pentels because they don't bleed and it makes a sharper um, signature. It's like you, you make a quilt and you sign the, the blocks or whatever. So you need you need to get the, don't don't use Sharpies because <laughs> they'll, right. they'll, their line will bleed way out. Gotcha. All right, and finally, what we got here? Um, this is by Pilot Company, Friction Marker. Um, it does a line, thin line right here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of faint, too. Yeah, well, it's easy to see with the heat. If I can get enough heat here. See, you can erase it with uh -huh. the heat. The other thing is, is you can iron it and erase it. So that, so you're talking about literal heat, like you can. Yeah, well, the eraser, this eraser is special, but plus, if you put the iron on it and heat it, it will erase. The only caveat here on this is when it gets cold, there's a chemical still left in the fabric, and some of the marks come back. So there have been people that have had, oh no, they have shipped a quilt over to uh, you know across the country to another quilt show and the cold in the um bottom of the airplane made some of the marks come back really so this is it's very temperature yes, sensitive and pilot ha does not market this to be, be on fabric there are people that swear by it and then you know i tell everybody if they get any of these be careful because the um it can come, the marks can come back if it gets cold. And, and hmm. I, I've, I've shown people before, they iron their stuff, and I'll put a piece in the freezer at the shop, and the, the marks come back. And that's because even though you iron it, the chemicals are still in there. Gotcha. Just because they're not visible anymore, the chemicals are still in there. And, and it's, it's a pretty cool pen, and, and a lot of people like to mark it because it, because it does, it's 
very easy to be raced or ironed away. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, about four more things. Okay. Um, template, are we going to go over here? Template marking pencil. Mm -hmm. This will write on your plastic and your mylars and that kind of thing that you make templates out of. So you can draw lines that you have to mark. Or you can trace around on the plastic. Because sometimes, have you ever tried to draw on plastic with a regular ink pen? I'm sure at some it, point in my life. Yeah, I have, and yeah. It, it just won't. It's so hard to do. So this is a writes on plastic, and don't use it on fabric because it won't won't come off. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're doing something on template plastic, this will come off with a damp cloth. Okay. So you can change your whatever you need on the template. So if you have a square and you're doing so three different things on a square, you can do the first process and mark the, on the template and then race it and do the others. Nice. Okay. Cool. Transfers. These are what you traditionally see from your grandma or you might might do some out. Some of you probably do some embroidery and you just take this and it comes from the, the factory and you just take it and it's got ink mm -hmm. and you put it face down, iron it, and this transfers to the fabric. Gotcha. And then you embroidery. So that's pretty well, simple. Yeah. Ta-da! You can make your own. So this is a transfer p pencil, so you trace and transfer. Uh -huh. So you trace and make your own whatever. You have a, a favorite um, font on, of a name. Or just your own handwriting. Yeah. Cool. And so you transfer. You put this on a transfer piece and then flat down, iron it on, and then you've got it on the fabric, and then you can stitch on it. Okay. And it's got instructions on the back how, what to do. And that, that's pretty cool. Very nice. Um, I could not find my um, dressmaker paper that goes with this, but this is a little um, rotary thing, and you get the um, word just went tung. <laughs> we make carbon copies, carbon paper for dressmakers, and you just, just pretend this is the, the carbon paper. Okay. And this is this, and you just roll, like if you're making a circle, you just roll here, and it pushes the, the carbon onto the fabric. Interesting. So for dressmakers, like if you have things, you can go through your pattern, through your carbon, and it'll get it right on the, the fabric in between. Nice. And unfortunately, I found out that I was out of the paper on the shelf, and I could not find mine in the office, So, but I thought I'd bring it and mention it. And you have fabric eraser which is a little bit gotcha. um, special, non-smudge eraser, removes pencil marks from quilts and fabric. And so your regular pencil, I wouldn't be 100% unless I tested it first, but, but right. some of your, your um, pencils can come out with, the, with this fabric eraser. So just in case yeah. you got an eraser. Right. Okay, cool. Well, none, there's of us, a... none of us are perfect, so well, we have to have erasers, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, so let's race 30 minutes of the day and start over at 9, right? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's very, uh, very much like our day today so far. So, um, so all these products, just to make sure uh, our audience knows, all these products are available at your store. Is that right. correct? Right. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and pull this up here real quick. So if you want to go to Susan's store, you can go to Hyder Hangout, or you can give her a call, 423-715-2908. Uh, you can go to her store physically over on the First Street Square across from Catch Restaurant and next to Trailhead Bicycle Company, um, just a block off the square of downtown Cleveland. Okay. Uh, so, uh, And all these products are available in her store. You can also go to her Happenings tab and go to Classes and sign up for some of the classes that she has. Or if you want to look at some other things she has on the calendar, you can see kind of a, at a glance some of yeah, the things that she has a going huge, on. Yeah, a huge calendar. If you hit the view calendar, there's a – and the YouTube videos are on there now. Oh, yeah, that's right. So if you so want to watch any of the other uh, videos that we've uh, we've done with Susan, you can go on to her website. And where would that be? Happenings tab. Happenings. Go down. It says our YouTube. So hide, hide or hang out. One more up right there. YouTube videos. And it's got them listed there. Oh, wow. Very cool. Except for Mondays, I don't. I hadn't found Mondays yet. I don't know if he's been busy or. Susan gets stabbed. Let's see what that one looks like here. <laughs> that is what it says. So, <laughs> so you can go there and take a look at all of the uh, the other videos that we've done so far with Susan. Uh, this one, I guess, uh, has to do with needles. So. Right. 
Good. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Susan, for coming in. I apologize about our slight delay this morning, but we were able to get uh, get uh, get in what we needed to get in. So. Right. Yes. And the uh, preview for Monday. Preview for Monday. Um, we are going to actually use some, some of the markers, and I'm going to show how to make a template out of household items so that you can cut fabric out with just using scissors. Cool. All right. Well, stay tuned for that on Monday, and uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with uh, Miss Tony Miles. All righty.